Hey friends, welcome back to the shop for another episode, another project. And if this is your first time here, I'm Art. If you've been a long time follower of the channel, you know that last year, I think it was last year, we actually did the big three, big four upgrade on our 2012 Forerunner right behind me. And that was twofold, one to support all the lighting and everything that we have on the vehicle but also to kind of build a better foundation for audio upgrades that we're gonna be coming down the road. Well, the time is now. Since we are waiting on parts and waiting on uh, other things to come in for Project Herald and Project Clara, it's time to now finally jump on a project that has literally been sitting on the workbench for over a year. And what that is, is actually upgrading the audio in the Forerunner itself. All right, so what are we upgrading? Well, the title gives it away. Clearly, we are replacing the OEM Audio Plus system that's in the Forerunner now. Now, if you're familiar with the OEM audio, you would likely say, well, that's an upgrade from OEM already. Why are you getting rid of it? And that is a great question, and you're right. OEM Audio Plus is an upgrade from the OEM systems. However, I have had nothing but problems from this one since I actually purchased the Forerunner. Now, it was installed by the company that I bought this from, and the system that actually was installed in it is the components and all the doors to include an 8 inch subwoofer in the rear and an amplifier to power it all. Uh, initial problems that I had with the system I contacted OEM Audio they warranted me the amp and the controller because it's all in one so I got a new one on that one however that did not take care of the issues the subwoofer still did not work we could not figure out why it was not working. Had a secondary shop try to look at it, they couldn't figure it out. And when I turned the power up on the amp or the head unit to increase the volume, the system would clip. So I, I finally have had enough of it and it was time to go ahead and just replace everything that we could possibly replace. Now the components in the doors, they're great. They sound great. They've got great bass response no issues with those so what we are going to end up tackling is getting rid of that sub getting rid of that amp redoing all the wiring and installing a new amp in so that should clear out all the issues and hopefully bring back a full audio system that i've been yearning for for the past three years since i've owned this forerunner so let's get into the equipment that we're upgrading it to and then let's jump just dead into the project itself I'm... these things are covered with dust because they've been sitting here for so long Damn! so basically what we have here is an 8 inch scar audio VD series the VD 8d2 sub and we have the scar audio OFC amplifier kit. And last but not least, we have the Scar Audio SKM9005D. So this is our 900 watt five channel class D amplifier to support the sub as well as all the mids and highs that are currently in it. Now the OEM Audio Plus subwoofer comes in this really cool and convenient enclosure right here it slides right into one of the compartments so it's secure doesn't go anywhere it's got a good little bit of airspace for the 8 inch sub that it's in there all right let's talk OEM audio plus amp so this is it this actually should be mounted underneath the seat however this is the way that it was when I bought the forerunner it appears to be missing some things in order for it to mount now you can get a little bit better view of the enclosure itself. It is connected in the back with these two separate plugs. So we're going to alter that. Let's go ahead and get this sub replaced. The 
mess. A little side-by-side -side comparison. SCAR audio on the left, OEM Audio Plus on the right. Totally see a difference in everything from the cone to the spiders to the magnets. And the reason I'm going with these VD8s is because they are a low-profile sub. Same ones I have in the WRX. Less enclosure space but still a good high output. <laughs> Quick test fit me before we bolt this in. Like the basket on the scar is just a little bit wider than the OEM audio. Yeah, just a little bit. Gonna have to do a little bit of modification. let's talk about the new amplifier since we have the storage system in the back this is going to be a perfect place to where we're going to mount the amp it will be out of the elements it will be out of contact from anything and really secure and I absolutely love the compact nature of these amps now technology has drastically improved from when I first got into car audio so what we're gonna end up doing is mounting this down here it'll be out of the way seat won't come in contact with it and it should still get some decent airflow as well all right let's walk through pieces of the install power cable fuse block with the ANL fuse run it over we're gonna run it directly to our SDHQ uh, billet aluminum battery terminals that power wire just runs directly through a large grommet in the firewall. We've got a power cable and our remote turn on lead running down the left hand side of the vehicle. All right, we've got our wires running back to the amp. All right, our ground is now done. We've already tested power, everything works. Remote turn on works. So We'll run those last few cables, we'll clean the wiring up just a little bit, should be ready to play. Okay, so my initial plan of running new speaker wire to each of the doors fell flat on its face because uh, basically Toyota has the speaker wires going from the speakers through the pass-through uh, rubber grommets and then into a uh, basically a connector in the pillars so there is no way to be able to feed a new wire through for the rear doors without drilling holes we're not going to do that so what we're going to do is use this nine wire this right here has all the eight wires needed for the speakers and then as well as a remote wire all made into it if you want to use the remote, I probably won't since I've already ran a separate remote. Uh, my, I'm just going to keep what I already had in there and not try to pull wire and make it complicated. Here is our TO2 
two harness that we pulled from the Forerunner already that I have. This will go into the head unit. Basically, all of our speakers before were ran off of the head unit, and since everything is gonna be passed through the amp, we no longer need to do that. So we have cut all of our speaker wires, our greens, our purples, our grays, and our whites. And those colors will match up with the speed wire. We'll solder those up, and we'll just have one speed wire to run from the dash back to the amp. So let's get the fun wiring done. All right, I think we're ready to go ahead and get it inside the vehicle, hooked back up to all the main harness, run our nine wire back to the amp, and then uh, we'll repeat the soldering process. We've got our nine wire, our channel one and two RCAs, our channel three and four RCAs, and our subwoofer RCAs ran back. And everything Wired up, loomed up, looking clean. For the first time since owning this Forerunner, which has been uh, over three years, finally have music in all doors and a sub. <laughs> so damn happy. It's loud and it's clear. All right, that's it for this episode. Another opportunity for a lot of learning. I've done a number of different audio installs in different vehicles, but never in a Forerunner. And this one perplexed me a little bit until I learned that there is a front channel and a rear channel. And uh, it, it's, it just confused me for a little while. But thankfully, got it all straightened out. It plays phenomenally and I am incredibly happy Dana probably won't be because it's loud but eh, thankfully this is my daily driver so she'll be okay <laughs> so until next episode thanks again for following along we certainly appreciate it take care stay safe we'll see you soon bye <laughs>